Do you love him today? Do you know that you're a child of God today? Well, we're so glad that you're with us. Thank you for worshiping with us. I want to welcome all of our campuses. I want to welcome Gwinnett and Buford and Spartanburg and Orange County and all of our online viewers. Would you give them a warm, warm welcome? Those of you joining us by television, we're so thankful you're watching today. Go to at least three people and tell them you look thinner, you look younger, you look better looking than the last time I saw you. And they will, they will smile back at you. They'll do it. I tell you what, it's been a pretty miraculous, amazing week as we have just come out of the greatest forward conference we have ever had. No doubt about it. It was beautiful. It was powerful. It was... If, you know, how do you tell somebody it's nothing like, it's kind of like watching a video or a DVD of heaven. It's not the same as being there, right? And so, I mean, we, we sat in heavenly places this week. There were just magical moments, whatever you want to call them, where God went deep and powerful and changed lives for his glory. And we're so thankful, thankful for the thousand plus volunteers that pulled it off out of this church. I can never be able to express the appreciation to our team, our staff, all of our teams that have worked so diligently. And uh, I'm so, so very thankful to another special group of sponsors out of this church, financial sponsors who stepped up and we would not have touched 13,000 plus teenagers in that arena had it not been for the financial, financial supporters who said, my work is my ministry. And with the work of my hands, I will finance the reaching and saving of souls. And for that, we say from our heart, thank you, thank you, thank you for making miracles happen. Hey, it's exciting. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to open them with me, please, to the Old Testament book of Zechariah chapter 1. Zechariah chapter 1 is where I'm going to go. And then uh, I have another scripture that I want to look at in Joshua 1 and verse 5, but you don't have to turn there. That's why we have screens. If you don't want to look it up in your Bible, you can be like a heathen and just look at the, just look at the screen. But... If you're really looking for a great verse, Zechariah 1 is where I want to go. Look at this in verse 17. Again, proclaim saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, my cities shall again, listen, spread out through prosperity. The Lord will again comfort Zion or my people. I'll again choose Jerusalem. And when I raised my eyes and looked, there were four horns. He's having a vision now. And I said to the angel who talked with me, what are these? So he answered me, these are the horns that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. The Lord then showed me four carpenters. The King James says carpenters. Maybe a translation you have reads differently. The one I'm reading out of says craftsman. But the original language, the closest you can get to it, is the carpenter. Like Jesus was the carpenter's son. Joseph, his earthly father, was a carpenter. Then he showed me four carpenters. And I said, what are these coming to do? So he said, these are the horns that scattered Judah so that no one could lift up his head. Notice that. No one could lift up his head. But the carpenters are coming to terrify them and cast out the horns of the nations that lifted up their horn against the land of Judah to scatter it. You may be wondering, what in the world has that got to do with my life? More than you realize. And I'm going to share it in just a moment. God had decreed to his people something pretty powerful in this text. He said, I am going to prosper and bless you. As a matter of fact, he told Joshua in Joshua 1 in verse 5, he said that no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. 
No one will stop you from doing what I've called you to do. He went on to say, and you shall have good success. These are Bible words. I'll prosper you wherever you go, wherever the soles of your feet go. I'll give you good success. I'll prosper you. What God was saying is you're going to have good success all the days of your life. He said it to Joshua and he says it to his people. And no man will be able to stand before you and stop you. Every relationship God entered into, he lifted people. He built up people. He multiplied their life. He increased their life. It's so important to understand that God's dream for you is so much bigger than what you dream for you. And he said, I have a promise for you. And here's the promise. You can prosper. And you can have in this life good success because that matters. If you think God's not for you and if you think God doesn't want you to do well in life, and enjoy your life and have a blessed life, you'll never see it. And it's so important to get your thinking right to understand God said no man standing before you will be able to stop you. If they oppose you, I'll deal with the opposition. But you have a promise that God can prosper your life. I don't care what your age is. I don't care who you are. And that you can have, you shall have good success. I love those words. I love those words that they're in the Bible. That's why in Zechariah 1, the, the text starts out with God prospering his people. Notice in that verse, the first one that I read, it said that he prospered them. And when he began to prosper them, they began to spread out. See, when God begins to prosper a person's life spiritually, physically, emotionally, when he begins to bless you in every area that trickles down to your finances in every area, it begins to spread you out. You begin to go to places you never dreamed you would go. When God begins to put his favor on someone's life, it begins to take you beyond anything you ever imagined. You begin to go to places. He spreads you. Notice prosperity and the blessing of God begins to spread you out. He said, I'm I'm spreading you abroad. I'm spreading you out. I'm taking you to places you never dreamed of. I want you a vision. I want you to have a vision bigger than where you are now, what you're doing now. I have not designed small things for you. I'm going to spread you out. I'm going to take you to places that you never dreamed you would go. And watch this. Just as he was spreading his people out in Zechariah 1 and prospering them, then he had a vision of four forces, four horns that rose up to oppose and scatter and defeat the people of God. And notice what their assignment was to so oppress and stop God's people from realizing the good success the prosperous journey that God wanted them to have in life. And the Bible said he, those four horns, now horns in the Bible represent power. These are spiritual powers or we would call them spirits. He saw in a vision four horns or four spirits that came to oppress God's people, stop them from having a big, abundant, blessed life. And, and the Bible said so oppress them, catch this verse, that they could not, look, listen to this, see this mental picture, they could not lift up their head. They were so oppressed that they walked around like this, not looking up, not looking out, not confident, not blessed, but oppressed and to the point that no man lifted his head. As soon as God spoke prosperity to them, four horns came to hold them back. But then he said, I saw something miraculous in the same vision. I saw four men coming in the spirit of the carpenter. He said, I saw four carpenters. Now, that represents Jesus because Jesus was the carpenter's son. 
Joseph, his earthly father, was a carpenter, and Jesus worked all of his life in a carpentry shop. A carpenter is somebody who built your house or built the apartment you live in. You know what a carpenter is. It's somebody who builds. Notice the spirit that Jesus comes in. The enemy comes to oppress you so that you can't even lift your head up, and you go around defeated and oppressed. But here comes the spirit of the carpenter to build you up, to raise you up, to lift up your head so that you will look out and see greater things. And I'm here today to proclaim a word over your life. The spirit of the carpenter is going to come on you while you sit under this message today. And the enemy's tried to hold you down and suppress and stop, but I see the spirit of the carpenter coming to build you up and to raise you up. And listen, no man will be able to stand before you. No man living, no man dead, no voice in your past, no voice in your future, no voice in your present can stop you because the spirit of the carpenter is upon you. Take a praise break and I'll keep preaching. Oh. So I'll, I'll speak from my own experience real quick. Now I'm not gonna preach long, but, but I'll speak real quick about these four these four horns of opposition that want to keep your head down right here. Live right here. Be limited. Be, live right here. Don't look out. Don't look up. Don't expect anything great. Just, just go around defeated. For me, in my life and in this ministry, those four horns represented four spirits. The first horn represents the spirit of lack. Well, you see, the enemy would love to attach to your life at an early age the spirit of lack. The spirit of lack is when you have in your mind there's not enough. There's not enough. I'll never go to college because there's not enough. I, 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 and, and it's not just money. It's not just financial things. Lack of education. Lack of love. Lack of finances, lack of joy, lack, lack of confidence, lack of self-esteem so that you go around and you can't even look anybody in the eye. You don't have any confidence in yourself. It's a spirit of lack and intimidation. You were created in the image of God Almighty. They may have said, you're a slow learner. They may have said, you, you'll never be anything. They may have said, you're just trash, and your parents never did anything, and you'll never do anything. And the enemy, like a, like a horn with a spirit of lack, lack of affection, lack of love, lack of having a father, lack of having a good influence, an environment that you were raised in. But that spirit of lack is defeated by the spirit of the carpenter who can come and build you up and raise you up into who God called you to be. I remember when, uh, when we were at a time in this ministry where that spirit of lack tried to attach itself to me. I'll never forget it. Like, it's like it was yesterday. But we were in the old building and we had some great needs and, and uh, we'd started television and we'd used the same cameras for, I think it was close to 15 years. It was crazy. And you know, anybody knows technology. You can't, things are changing every six months, you know. And we'd had the same cameras for, for about at least 10, maybe 15 years. I forget, but it was, it was antique, basically. I walked in the little studio, if you could call it that, that we had. And they had all the equipment. And, and our TV guy at that time had a roll of duct tape that was attached to his belt. I'm not joking. And the whole time we would be trying to film a program, he knew that before we could get through, something was going to break. It would be a light that would fall, some raggedy little light, or, or some, some camera cord would break off, some cable on some other camera or some 
thing back there in the machine room back there would fall to pieces. And he was just going around most of the time while we were taping, and I'm trying to do a TV show, and he's he's ripping off. He's, he got it down to an R. He's ripping off duct tape, and whew, bam, and I'm putting this light up, and putting that camera, and fixing that cord, and zoop, 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 and he's, he's just everything. It was ridiculous, and the Lord spoke to me in my spirit, and he said, are you tired of duct tape level? I looked around, all I saw was black and silver duct tape all over the place. And the Lord said, you know, you'll get what you believe me for, for as a man thinks, so is he. And if this is what you think I'm capable of, that's all I'll ever be able to do for you. But if you'll believe me, I'll take you from this level, out of duct tape level, into exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or even think. you got to get free from the spirit of light that keeps your head down. And I just want to shout a minute in my space because look what the Lord has done. It's a debt-free property. We don't owe a penny. Those cameras, everything in here is debt-free to the glory of God. I'm preaching not just to old people. I'm preaching to young people. I'm preaching to middle-aged people that your God will supply all your needs. He's a big God. And you've got to get free from the spirit of lack. The second spirit or horn that will oppose you from reaching your dream. And some of you, the enemy's already told you, you'll never be able to do anything. You don't have any money. No, you don't have enough this. You don't have enough talent. You don't have enough good looks. You don't have, but you've got a great God. You forgot the God factor. You're focusing on who's against you, but no man will be able to stand against you because of the God factor in you. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And I, I, the Lord is my shepherd. I feel like preaching today. I keep trying to turn it down. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Shake off that spirit of lack and believe God for more than you've ever seen before. Give him a shout of praise, and I'll, I'll try to behave. I'll try. Calm down. Calm down. Calm your spirit, Jensen. Calm. Calm. Secondly, the second horn is the horn of limitation. You see, if the enemy can't get you bound with a spirit of light that is, doesn't exist and this is all I'll ever be and all I'll ever have, then he'll come with a spirit of limitation which says things exist but not for me. Oh, he'll do it for Jensen or he'll do it for this one or he'll do it for that one but not for me. There's a ceiling over my life spirit of limitation. There's a barrier. I can go this far, but I can't get to that next level of success, that next level of the dream that God has given me. Large elephants are held in place by ropes and wood stakes that have just been driven into the ground with a hammer. And even though these large elephants are massive and powerful, they are held with a rope tied around their leg that they could just shake and the stake would fly off and the rope would be freed. Why do they stay there bound just because they can feel a little rope around their ankle? The key to it is when they have an elephant that's born into captivity, they will take that elephant, they'll keep while he's small and they will put a chain a metal chain a large chain around his leg and they will take a cement block that has been put in the ground and buried that is attached to that train to that chain and that poor little fella at first when they put that chain on him he'll he'll fight it He'll kick his leg. He'll run, and, 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 and the chain will pull on the leg. I hope you're getting a good shot, cameraman. I'm really acting this out for you. 
the, 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 the leg, come on, help me preach somebody. He, there's, a, there's, a, there's a chain of limitation. And they said, what happens, listen to this, this is amazing. What happens is after a period of time, after trying and failing, and trying and only going so far, and trying and, oh, I hoped, but it didn't happen. Finally, something clicks mentally in that elephant to where he stops trying because he accepts the fact I'm limited and I'll never go further than where I am right here, right now. So when he becomes big and mighty and strong and awesome and big tusk and powerful elephant, he won't even try when they put a rope and a little stick in the ground about two feet all he would have to do is flick it off. But he is so bound mentally with a chain of limitation that he doesn't even try anymore. This is exactly what the enemy wants you to accept. He stops trying to be free. Every time he feels that rope on his ankle, it reminds him of a thought that I can't be free. After a while, he stops believing he stops believing that he can go further, that he can do more. And I'm telling you, I'm preaching to people right here, right now at all of our campuses and on television and around the world, I'm telling you, the enemy of our soul, that horn, that second horn is the horn of limitation. The truth is the elephant is bigger. The elephant is mightier. The elephant is stronger. You are not the person you were before Jesus came into your life. When Jesus came into your life, he gave you power and you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And don't you allow the enemy to place a chain of limitation on you. Ever so often, you have to push against the limitations that say you're going this far but no further. If you don't push against them, you'll stay there the rest of your life. Listen, the hardest time to do anything is the first time. The hardest time to learn to ride a bicycle is the first time. Once you learn, you, you know you can do it. And the enemy wants to hold you with a spirit of limitation and never let you get beyond trying the first time. He doesn't even want you to try the first time. The hardest time to get people to come to church is the first time. Because they have a spirit of limitation. I don't want to go there. I'm not comfortable there. But if you can ever get them there, then they say, hey, I liked it. I'll come back. The, 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 first, the hardest time to get a person to praise the Lord is the hardest time. The first time. Some of you came to this conference. Some of you came to this church today, and you're a little freaked out. Because people were jumping around and people were having a good time. I mean, they were, they were enjoying Jesus. Isn't that a crime? Isn't that awful? They were actually enjoying the praise and worship instead of a spooky organ. They, they, were, they, were, they were actually getting into it. The first time is the hardest time to praise the Lord because, you know, you come to a church like this and some of you actually think that all these people came, dressed up and everything, got ready, came to church just to watch you. <laughs> the first time is the hardest time. To, it's like, <clears throat> I can't clap my hands because we didn't do that in my denomination. I can't. Mm, 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 mm. But if you can ever... Mm. <laughs> I really want to praise the Lord, but I, but I can't raise my hand because my daddy never did that. My granddaddy, he was kind of... And, and, but if you can ever, it'll feel like it's some big air balloon when you first raise it. It feels like it's, oh God, oh God, is that my arm? Yeah, but just throw it up because what you're doing is you're breaking the spirit of limitation. Come on, throw for praise. I dare you to shout like you believe Jesus is alive. Well, since you're already freaked out, I'm going to really freak you out. I feel like praising God. We're going to take a praise break. And if you've been limited in your praise, you need to get free right here, right now. The chain's about to break. Elephants go You ever see one of those elephants go wild?
studio. They just run all over cars and everything. Run right down the street. Turn to your neighbor and say, you need to run like a wild elephant, you. Sit down. The hardest time to tithe is the first time. My God, I remember I worked in a Chinese restaurant. I was 17 years old. I had the cutest little outfit. I felt like an idiot every day. I had to, I had to wear this little kung fu little outfit. It was the... It had a little deal that came down here, and then I had to wear these uh, yellow pants, and, 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 and it came up to here with one of these little collar things. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Grasshopper. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and I'd bust those tables. I'll never forget, I got my first, t my first paycheck, about 150 bucks. I was so proud. First thing, my first conscious thought was when I looked at it, I wanted to know who in the world was SS. Who, who stole half my check, Social Security? Who, who are you that you can take about 50 bucks out of my $150 check? And then my daddy, who was a preacher, said, you going to pay your tithe? If you don't pay your tithe, God will take it out of your hide. You better pay your tithe. Man, I'm telling you, for me to write that $15 tithe check out of my little account, and that offering plate came by, <laughs> the first time, ever so often you have to push on the limits. There's a level where everybody thinks something is big. And when you hit that level of you think, I have arrived, that's big. That's dangerous because we need to hear this as a church. When we as a church decide we're big enough, then God says, okay, you have what you need. You're full. Go find me, Holy Spirit, some empty vessels because they think that because they've got a full church that they're big enough. The spirit of limitation says whatever's big in your mind. Maybe big in your mind is not big in somebody else's mind. Maybe a million dollars is big to you, but in somebody else's mind, that's pocket change. And you know what? As a man thinks, so is he. And if you don't get enlarged in your thinking, if you don't get the spirit of limitation to hold you right there the rest of your life, hold the, your dream, hold your vision, hold your ministry... God wants to take the limits off. God wants to tell you that he's God and don't you put a limit on it. Whatever somebody else did can become the, can, that was their ceiling can become your platform if you'll let God do it. The, the, the third horn is so important that I had to overcome spirit of lack, spirit of limitation, then there's something in the Bible. Paul, the apostle, talked about Satan. I tried to go to a certain place, and he said these words, Satan hindered me. What does that mean? Satan hindered me. He said, I went, and Satan hindered me. Satan has hindered me. I want, I want Blake to come up here real quick. And, and what, he, what he was talking about is he, he said, I'm on my way. I'm on my journey. I broke through from lack. I broke through from limitation. I'm not going to be held just because nobody in my family's ever done it. I can do it because God told me I could do it. But then in front of him, there was, he said, Satan hindered me. What does that mean? It's like you're moving, but you're making progress, but it's like it's, it's a fight. It's like, no, let, let in a little bit, but, but, <laughs> but it's, like, it's like I'm making progress. I'm trying to push him in that hole right there, but, but it's jams and it's, aggravations and it's attacks and it's, it's a struggle all the way. And this is how it is with a dream. Come here. This is how it is with a dream. Some of you don't understand. Some of you have tried and failed two or three times and you think, you don't understand why you sit on that nice cushioned seat. You don't have any idea the demons we had to fight. And there were times when I couldn't get there that way and I had to roll that way and I had to go this way and I had to go and oh no, my head's going down. But here comes the spirit of the carpenter and he'd build me up and I'd push some more. I can go. We can do it, church. And if that's not enough, come here, Tracy. 
Come here, hurry. And, it, and, and so I got this going on. I want you to get behind me. So here's the fourth horn. I got a hindering spirit that's just kind of jabbing me and resisting me. Everybody say resisting me. You won't get there without resistance. Quit whining about it. Man up. Woman up. Stand up. Quit going like this every time. Oh, my God, I got rejected. Oh, my God, I got rejected again. Stand up. Don't let the enemy put your head down. Walk right back in that next office and say, they didn't see my value, but somebody is going to see my value, and I'm going to get there. I don't know how, but nothing will, no man will stand before me. I'm going to have good success. So, 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 so here it is now. So you got, you got hindrance in front of you, and then there's one other spirit. There's something behind me. The Bible calls it a devouring spirit. And so I'm get, I, I took this ground. Now you back up a little bit. I got, and I took this ground. But here comes the devourer. And what does the devourer? This one fights me about my future. This one's trying to come behind me and steal what I've already won. That's good. So I've got a hindering spirit in front of me and a devouring spirit behind me. And just when the enemy thinks he's going to win, Ezekiel said, or, or Zechariah said, I saw in that same vision just when the, the head was down and defeated and it looked like it was over, I saw the spirit of the carpenter. Thank you. I saw the spirit of the carpenter come and raise and build up God's people. And I've just come in this house today to encourage somebody. The devouring spirit that's behind you, he said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And for the hindering spirit before you, he said, no man will be able to, to stand before you. No spirit of limitation. And sometimes people with their words, listen, can build a house of limitation around you. And all of your life, because you were told you couldn't, the house of their words has, has completely limited you in your own mind that you can't do it. But here comes the spirit of the carpenter. And he says, I'm here to build you up. I'm here to raise you up. You shall mount up with wings like eagles. You shall run and not be weary, walk and not faint. And I wrote down, I felt what I had from the Lord for this group today. Number one, the Lord says that for your trouble, you shall have double. Just like Job. Double for your trouble. Turn to your neighbor and say, if you won't quit, if you won't give up, say it, say it with some, say it like you really believe it. If you won't quit, if you won't give up, double. Whatever you're at right now, double for your trouble. Praise God, I'm almost done. Here's the second thing I heard going on. If this goes off in your spirit, you need to respond to it. The Lord said, key people are coming into your life. Key people. You're not going to get there without key people. This morning in the, in the first service, sitting right there where Tracy's at and sitting right there behind my wife were two key people that God brought into our lives and into this ministry. When I was preaching on limitation, one of the guys jumped up on his feet this morning, threw up his hands. He's real tall. And he was praising God, and it just hit me. There's one of those key people. Because he started out poor and broke. You wouldn't believe how poor he was. You should hear his story. But now he owns, I think it's about eight McDonald's. He owns them. Franchises. The whole thing. And then sitting on the front row was a guy named uh, Zach Leroy. And he started a little chicken firm, a little chicken shop down the road in Athens. Just fried chicken and a piece of bread is how he started it. Now it's Zaxby's Chicken. 
He was sitting on, he was sitting on the front row. Key people. You know, I don't ever spend time with those guys. We don't ever eat. I don't call them up. We don't, we don't chit-chat. We don't go on vacation together. It's just God knows how to bring key people. And the only reason we were able to have forward conference is because of people like that who said, you do it and we'll help. And there were many, 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 many that did this. We'll write the check. I'm saying to you, you don't believe what I'm preaching. I know what I'm talking about. God is bringing into your dream key people from the north, south, east, and west. I want you to believe the spirit of the carpenter is coming on you, and you're going to do what God told you. You're going to build what God told you to build. You're going to raise up what God said you're going to raise up. The third thing I heard the Lord say is I will break the spirit of limitation and I will break the back. Ooh, I love that. I heard in my spirit the Lord say, today, if you will proclaim it, I will break the back of the spirit of failure. Well, I just spoke it, and if you believe it, respond and God will back it up. I do believe it. Hindering spirits will move. No man will stand before you. Success will come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Here's a big one. And your head will be lifted up. Just because it's never been done doesn't mean you won't do it. No man will be able to stand before you. So I close with this. My God will make you an asset owner, a land possessor, a wise investor, a kingdom builder. Opportunities are coming to you. A new level of success is coming to you. Key people, whew, key people are coming into your life. I come with the spirit of the carpenter. Some of you came in here, but you're leaving here because I come with the spirit of the carpenter, Jesus Christ. And I build you up in your faith to tell you that God is going to bless you with good success if you'll put him first in your life. I want everybody to rejoice at every campus. Just lift your voice. Stand up on your feet. No one moving, no one leaving. Just stand up on your feet. No one moving. We don't move during the altar calls. So very, very still right now. I wanted to preach this today because I knew we would have some students. Because you don't need to go to your 20 or 30 years old to find out what I'm teaching you right now. That God is wanting to speed up some successes and blessings on a new generation. That he wants the mentality of lack to be broken. He wants the spirit of limitation to be severed from your life. He wants today for you to lose your duct tape mentality. Just get by, patch it up, well, the same God who can supply duct tape can give you a brand new cord, <laughs> brand new camera. He's, he's El Shaddai, not El Cheapo. Tweet that. Does anybody believe what I'm preaching? How many of you have been, been hindered? You're making progress, but you've been taking some jabs. I dare you to get your head up. Here comes the spirit of the carpenter to say, get back up. I'm not through. You're going to hit it again. And this time, no man will stand before you. No spirit will stand before you. No defiance will stand before you. And I will, God says, rebuke the devourer. He's trying to come the back door. I will rebuke him 
for your sake. You believe that? I said, do you believe that? Every head bowed, every eye closed in overflow at all of our campuses, wherever you are. If you're listening to me right now and you know without a doubt God is speaking to you and you know that he's got something for you but the enemy would love to stop you and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, that's where it begins. It begins with Jesus being Lord of your life. And if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, you can leave here today with your head held high saying, I am a child of God. I don't hope so. I don't wonder so. I know so. You can have it today. Pastor, pray for me. I don't know that I'm right with God and I want to be right with God. Would you pray for me? If that's you, I want you to boldly raise your hand right where you're standing all over this room. Every campus, just raise them high. Awesome. So many hands all over this room. Every one of you that raised your hand, don't let any, listen, don't let any voice of limitation whisper in your ear. Just stay where you are. Because like that elephant, the moment you take one step toward this altar, the chain is going to break. Get out of the seat where you are and come down front at every campus, at every campus. If you're in the overflow, you can come in the main building if you want to. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Here they come. Church, church, I want you to clap your hands and rejoice because the chains are breaking. Chains are breaking. Come on. The spirit, the, I'll break the back of the spirit of failure off some people. I'll break limitation. Nobody in your family has ever done it. Nobody in your family has ever lived for God. Nobody in your family has never overcome alcoholism or whatever. But today, God's calling you to a new place of victory. Come on. Come on. Humble yourself and walk down that aisle. There's so many of you that today, this is your victory day, your liberation day. Here they come, here they come, here they come. Come on, keep clapping, keep clapping. We're gonna wait just another moment, just another moment, just another moment. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Get them in as close as you can get them. Get them spread them out, guys. Spread them this way. Spread them that way so that they can come down this way. Come on. Spread over all of you this way. Walk over that way. Come on, look at me. All of you here, spread that way so that we can get these people in. Come on, here they come. Here they come. Here they come. Here they come. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Praise God. Now, everybody in this room, I want you to raise your hands toward heaven. Remember, you say, I don't do that. Wrong service. <laughs> Men everywhere with holy hands lifted. Men and women, pray this prayer out loud. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life completely to you. I know that you are for me. I know that you're not against me. I know that the enemy has hit me with the four horns, but I feel the spirit of the carpenter, Jesus Christ. That's him. He's here right now, building me up, raising me up, lifting me back up. And today, I lift my eyes to Calvary, where Jesus shed his blood died for me and rose on the third day and the spirit of the carpenter that raised him from the dead is raising my life back up raising my outlook up raising my faith up now let's just praise him that our name is written in the book of life and that in jesus name we can do all things no no man will stand before you living or dead no No more chains. No more chains. All over this room, 
I speak this word. I just feel like this is a word in season even for our church, don't you? How many of you business people receive this today? That God is going to fight your battles. Just raise your hands up high and say, I've been settled. I, 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 I've been limited. I've kind of put a, put a ceiling on what God might could do with my life. But you know what? The ceiling is broken. And I just decree today that the spirit of the carpenter is on me. And I'm going to do what God called me to do. Hallelujah. And you shall have good success. Look at somebody and tell them, I am looking at a highly successful person. You shall have good success. The spirit of failures, its back has been broken off of your life. Come on, tell somebody, the spirit of failure is broken, broken. You shall have good success. God's for you, son. He's for you. Honor him. Be a blessing. Don't live for yourself. Live for Jesus. My God. I'm going to bless you now. If you prayed that prayer at our campuses, go to the Kingdom Connection Lounge. They'll give you a Bible. They'll give you information. You get signed up to be baptized. If you haven't been baptized, if you're from another church, go back and tell your pastor, I want you to baptize me in water because Jesus has changed my life. Now, I'm gonna, I'm, I want everybody to freeze right where, where you are, and I'm going to speak this blessing over you. By the way, next Sunday is going to be an incredible day here at Free Chapel as we celebrate Freedom Weekend, the 4th of July. Don't miss it. And thank you to all of you who drove in. We're so thankful that you came to the conference. We pray God's grace on you to go home, God's protection. May the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine on you, be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I'll be at the back door. I'd love to shake your hand and say hello. Thank you for worshiping with us. Go with God.